Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. God said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard in me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power? are being done by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house and he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, 
as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Ghost, inspire us with your inmost hearts, that our words may be his utterance and our deeds his actions. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Early on in my journey as a Christian, I learned of the spirituality of the desert and was drawn to its mystery. There was a simplicity and clarity expressed by the people who chose that way of life, offering practical guides to holy living. These guides involved relational practices and the consequences of those practices. I went around a new corner in my faith life Until then, to me, religious faith consisted mostly of personal ideas. I hadn't quite gotten the idea that being a Christian was something you can only do with and for others. While many who were called to the desert in the third century were hermits, there were also communities as well as whole families. One of the most interesting desert dwellers in this era was Panufius. It's a great name, Panufius. Panufius had become known for the glory and of his virtue and his holiness. He was broadly held in high regard for his many miracles. Panufius feared, however, that he might have already received his eternal reward, his remuneration, in the form of human praise. In particular, in that detestable vanity of popularity. He secretly fled the large monastery of which he was the abbot. He put on worldly clothing and for many days lay weeping at the door of another monastery. Once admitted, he was assigned to a young monk who was in charge of the garden. He not only carried out in obedience all the tasks assigned to him, he also took on several necessary chores that others didn't want to do because they were unpleasant. He did these chores stealthily at night so that in the morning the whole community was astonished. How did these things get done? Who was performing these tasks? He spent three years in this setting but was eventually recognized and brought back to the monastery where he had been the abbot. Panufius attributed this outcome, not too surprisingly, to the devil, and so again secreted away, secreted away on a ship, this time to Palestine, where after gaining entrance to another monastery, he is assigned to a cell in which he meets John Cassian and Germanus. Panufius tells these young monks about the asceticism of Egyptian desert life, encouraging them to go and seek wisdom among the monks dwelling there. The result is that John Cashin eventually writes The Conferences, which is a record of his and Germanus' conversations with various desert fathers, all of which 
would have been lost to us without his efforts. It is just this kind of connection, born of humility and anonymity, through which come jewels in the crown of salvation. It is incalculable how many ways in which individual acts ripple out across the horizon of the kingdom. We also know that the great Dominican scholar and theologian Thomas Aquinas very much enjoyed the occasions when he would not be recognized and would instead be mistaken for being just another member of the entourage of monks traveling with Aquinas. He then would be assigned to some lowly task in the monastery, like washing dishes, and in this he lived out what he had written, almost the whole of Christian teaching is humility. Jesus spends much of his ministry dealing with humankind's variously overburdened attachments to morality, authority, and the role of God in history. Jesus wraps this all up under the heading of God's kingdom, or the reign of God, which is meant to simplify, through the telling of parables, God's relationship to us, our relationship to God, and to one another. Regularly, he gets caught up in scandals, many of which are just caused by the way people perceive him. Fast forward to the next level, in a period where the church, the early church, begins to strive for clarity in how one should see Jesus, formula were devised to sort out various misunderstandings or heresies, and these corrections usually covered a broad range of topics and problems, but many had to do with how one should perceive Jesus and why. Fast forward again to a third level, and we could say the way you and I think of and relate to Jesus determines how we live as Christians. And I'm not suggesting here that any of us think or act consciously governed by doctrine or systematic theology. That would be uh, exhausting and probably boring. What I am suggesting is that it is a good idea to regularly allow the Holy Spirit to take you on a good deep dive into the question, how do I relate to Jesus and why? In our gospel, Jesus is in his hometown. His neighbors are wondering with no small dose of attitude, who does he think he is? They are seeing him as his human self with brothers and sisters. And this is not entirely inaccurate. Jesus is like us in all ways except sin. So day in and day out, Jesus, following his Father's will, is doing what Jesus does. And this includes accepting the way he is perceived by those close to him. Here again, it is demonstrated that faith is required of those who seek healing. So he can do no great works. Some of us, it seems, would prefer to go without healing. There's never been a shortage of unclean spirits or the need to repent. So Jesus began to send them out two by two, giving them authority over the unclean spirits and to preach repentance. Take nothing with you and oh yes, no gadding about. They go two by two so that they each have a witness. Yeah, let's, let's get out of here. They don't want our help. We'll put this behind us entirely. Somewhere, there's someone who doesn't see the glory of God in all people and lives in fear. Somewhere, there's someone that believes 
that they don't need the body. There's someone who fails to acknowledge that when one part of the body is hurt, they also have been injured. Somewhere, there's someone who thinks that their life is their own, especially their gifts. Somewhere, there's someone who has forgotten that love is other-oriented. Somewhere, there's someone who doesn't know that they still have another chance. Either everybody counts or nobody counts. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out demons and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the, for the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the living God, saying, Hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, for the Anglican Communion, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Episcopal Church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Dorsey, our bishop, and for Ketlin, our bishop-elect, for Sheldon Calvary Camp, for the life and witness of this congregation. Guide your church with the wisdom of Christ. Living God, in your mercy, <clears throat> for this community and the world, for everyone affected by extreme heat, for families waiting for news of their loved ones in Surfside, for first responders, search and rescue workers, and all who offer comfort and support, for places around the world affected by COVID-19, and for effective and equitable distribution of vaccines. Hear us as we look to you for help. Living God, in your mercy. For our nation, as we celebrate Independence Day, with gratitude for those whose vision established our country and those whose labor built it, for wise use of the gift of freedom, for a spirit of unity and an end to polarization and contempt, for fulfillment of the dream of liberty and justice for all, for the strength and courage to strive for the common good, for those who serve and defend our country, particularly Christine, Wade, Trace, Robert, and John, 
for their families and for the safe return of those far from home. Open our minds and hearts to the prophetic message of freedom and equity. Living God, in your mercy. We give thanks for the birth of Charles Wilson Levine, grandson of Karen Young. We praise you for your goodness and love. Living God, in your mercy. For those who turn to you in their weakness, for Elise, Diane, Benjamin, Bob, Henry, Tim, Luke, Bob, Erica, Margaret, Anna, Nikki, Henry, Fairfax, Stefan, Linda, Paul, Tony, Paulette, Charles, Anne-Marie, Paul, Catherine, Murray, Phil, Louisa, Jamie, Jackie, Deborah, Nancy, Andy, Trish, and all those who have been commended to our prayers. For people suffering from COVID-19 and for those who care for them. For people throughout the world living with HIV and AIDS. For those struggling with addiction and those in recovery. For caregivers for those whom we now name. <clears throat> Uphold them with your strength and your grace. Living God, in your mercy. For those who have died, for James Robert Norwood, for those in whose memory altar flowers are given today, Anna Barry, Lauren Dice, Frederick Kenny, and Osakaria Oliver. For those who have died of COVID-19 and for their loved ones. For victims of gun violence. For all who mourn. For all, for those whom we now remember. Receive them into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed company of the saints in light. Living God, in your mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly hot. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church. It's good to see you all today. As many of you uh, know that as of today, we are fully optional with masks for those who are fully vaccinated, and that is for all the services. Upcoming this Wednesday evening at 6 p.m., Calvary will host a uh, meeting of the Beloved Community Initiative that is from the diocese that Calvary helped create. It's a mission to work for racial reconciliation uh, and justice within the diocese and beyond. The meeting will be in person at 6 to 7, a chance to learn what it's about, how we can become more involved, and we're also uh, going to be able to stream that, and we'll send out a link this week just before the meeting. Uh, Neil Rahman, our associate, and Leslie Reimer, other associate, 
are away this week, Neil visiting his grandparents and parents, and Leslie at Calvary Camp. Uh, the office is closed tomorrow in honor of Independence Day. Uh, brief update, the Ethiopian Orthodox congregation continues to meet and are extremely grateful to us for allowing that. This Saturday night at 2 a.m., yes, 2 a.m., they will begin a 12-hour litany in which they will bless their Ark of the Covenant with uh, two visiting bishops and several visiting priests. Uh, and that is what forms them officially in their tradition as a congregation. It will end, of course, in a great big feast. I'll go for the end, not the whole 12-hour thing, uh, but to be there to celebrate with them. I uh, mentioned last week, loved uh, Bishop-elect Ketlin Solak's quote, she's ready to become a Pittsburgher for Jesus. We are, in fact, having t-shirts made that say Pittsburgher for Jesus uh, will be available, I hope, in the next month or so uh, for convention as well as the ordination. Remember, that is at Calvary, ordination of the new bishop on Saturday, November 13th. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, our perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds, the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.